Now let's talk about it. Hey, did you know that on this day last year, our daytime high at PDX was 99 degrees and our all time high on this particular day is 106. But for the entire month, it's 107. That's as hot as it's ever been since record keeping began back in the 40s at PDX. So with all that in mind, 83 feels yeah, pretty good, pretty nice. <laughs> A nice view also from our uh, camera on top of the building here in downtown Portland. Let's go over to Mount Hood Meadows where it's 66. Looks nice there. Over to the Gorge, 80 degrees. And Lincoln City, 69. Plenty of sunshine for you at the coast right now. How about that wind? Wind mostly coming from the west northwest. Certainly healthy there along the coast between 15 to 20 miles per hour. Portland out of the northwest at about 16. The Dalles also northwest at 17. Now let's let's go a little bit farther south. Uh, we've been talking about milepost 97 fire there in southern Oregon. So wind direction at the surface coming from the north northwest that's pushing all that smoke to the south towards the California border. As a result, air quality is definitely affected and in the unhealthy category right around Medford and beyond over to Klamath Falls. Uh, looking a little bit better towards Roseburg, but still, as long as the wind stays from that direction, this, these areas will continue to be affected with the air quality alert in effect indefinitely. So when we take a look at our drought monitor, let's just start with the beginning of the month and watch how everything has progressed since July. Well, <laughs> Come on, computer, since July 1st. Okay, it's not doing what I'm asking it to do, but just to let you know that our air quality, or excuse me, our drought has actually expanded. Abnormally dry conditions expanded all the way to the California border, whereas just earlier this month, it was not quite to that point. We also have the moderate category there for our drought conditions in Northwest Oregon. Now, talking about any chance of anything in our weather forecast changing this up, well, we could be seeing some rain along the coast by the time we get to Wednesday, perhaps closer to four hundredths of an inch, which is not a lot. It's not going to last all that long either. But something more significant there we are monitoring is on Friday. We might be running into an atmospheric river, which means for us, it's basically like pointing the fire hose at one particular location. And in this case, most of that is going to be going north of Astoria and out towards Seattle, where in a period of about four or five hours, it could pick up close to about a half inch of rain. And for this time of year, that's uh, definitely significant. But then looking up and down the coastline, less than a tenth of an inch here in Oregon. That includes Portland, down through Salem, and Eugene. Not expecting anything really to hit east of the Cascades. So let's take again a look at timing for us. By the time we get to Wednesday, Wednesday midday, chance of showers there, mostly uh, north of Pacific City, up through the Washington coastline. Then it quickly disappears. We get to Thursday, a hot one for us. Friday, here's the next round of rain coming through. But then move it on out to the north, northeast. By the time we get to about 4 or 5 o'clock on Friday, the weekend looks great. Plenty of sunshine to go around. Daytime highs at the coast tomorrow. We'll see some upper 60s to low 70s and inland tomorrow right around 82. Now, how about the rest of the week? Because we have been talking about some 90s in the mix. So after that day of rain on Friday with a high of 83, then we see 92 by Sunday. Oh, why? Well, great way to wrap out July. Yeah. yeah. Start off.